Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about a very beautiful book. It's one of my favorites. It's called Yesterday and Long Ago. Written by one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, V.I. Arnold. So if you have not heard of Arnold, you can go to the internet and figure out more about him. I'll just tell you one story. When Arnold was 19 years old, he solved one of the problems from the Hilbert's list. So what is the Hilbert's list? At the turn of the century, around 1900, one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, David Hilbert, composed a list of 23 problems. Sort of like a challenge to the mathematicians of the next century. This is known as the Hilbert's list. 23 problems, each of them really tough, each of them really meaningful. And Arnold solved one of those, the 13th problem of that list, when he was just 19 years old. And then followed an illustrious career in mathematics. Lasting up to, I think, 2009 or 10, when he passed away. So, apart from being a great mathematician, writing a good deal on innovations in mathematics, he also wrote books that are beautiful, that teaches mathematics to us, the people who love the subject and want to know more about it. One such book is Yesterday and Long Ago. It's a fascinating book. Uh, it's, it's designed like this. There are short passages. Uh, each passage can be his own experience in some math conference in some country in some corner of the street. Maybe he saw a work of art. Maybe he talked to a very interesting person. Maybe related to mathematics, might not be related to mathematics. But somehow, mathematics comes back into the passage. And there are some passages which are stories from 15th century, 16th century, 11th century, from older Europe. And again, somehow mathematics circle, circles back into those stories as well. So it's, it's very interesting how the title of the book is just right. It's yesterday. That's something that happened in his life and long ago. That's some stuff that happened a long ago, but have some humor or mathematical content in it. So, you know, I tell this to my students all the time. We have students pursuing mathematical olympiads, ISI, CMI entrances, research programs, students who want to go to US, UK, Canada, or the best universities in India, students who want to do good mathematics. So I tell this thing all the time that one of the habits that you must have is reading book, reading good books at good intervals of time. And these books might not be exactly on math. Like these books might not be textbooks. They could be non-fictions. They could be fictions as well. This is a common habit of each and every mathematicians, mathematicians that I know of at least, and I have read about. And in fact, if you if you try to look into it a little bit more in the literature, you will find out that this is a habit of almost all successful people, especially people who are interested in innovations, people who are interested in extending the knowledge of the human mind. So, if you are a student, if you are listening to this, if you don't have a reading habit, I strongly urge you to develop one. Read one book every month. But it must be written by a really great 
person, like a great mathematician, great author, great activist, someone. Someone who has done something in his life. And that will add so much value to your thinking. Okay, now let's come back to this book, Yesterday and Long Ago. And in this, I found one passage on Ramanujan and Hardy. So it's, it's like this. It's that, that's like the, I think you can see it. It's, this is Hardy, this is Littlewood, and this is Ramanujan. So we all know about the story of Hardy, Ramanujan, and Littlewood. But one of the things that I really liked, I mean, maybe all of you know this story, that uh, Ramanujan died while he was in United Kingdom. And the visitor asked, this is, uh, Arnold is writing this, so someone is uh, visiting Cambridge. The visitor asked to be shown how Ramanujan slept and found that he slept on blankets and never suspected that he should have covered himself with them. So, ap apparently people in Madras never do, it, do this. That's what Arnold is writing. So, he had blankets, but he just slept on the blankets. He did not put them on. That is why he felt cold and that is why he got ill. It seems that first it was pneumonia and then tuberculosis. And he died at a very young age. So, of course, this is the story we all know. But I really like the human touch that Arnold actually attaches to the story next. He's actually a little bit critical about Hardy. He's saying, I think that Hardy's snobbery and his inhuman behavior did not let him visit his sick student who lived in the same house and did not let him give elementary practical advice. So, you know, I have read a lot of books and a lot of passages, a lot of stories related to Ramanujan and Hardy. Most of them were really praising Hardy, Ramanujan, Littlewood and everything. And you can also go ahead and read that story, learn that story, how a clerk from Madras went on to meet one of the good mathematicians, best mathematicians from Britain, and then went on to become a legend, Ramanujan that is. But I never um, read anything of this sort. It really, really touched me because he was talking in from the point of view of a teacher who must be humane, who must be actually thinking about his pupil, not just the mathematics, more than that. And I'm not saying that he's right or wrong, and I'm not criticizing Hardy per se. I do not have enough knowledge about the situation and so on. But I do see the human, huma, humane side of um, Arnold. It, it, tells you, it tells you a lot about a particular person or a mathematician from the things he writes. So that's one um, uh, anecdote. This is like from, as I told you, from history, right? From long ago. Now, another passage from, my, uh, from yesterday. It's on, it's called Our Manchuria. So there was a there was a battle between Russia. So as I told you, Arnold was a Russian mathematician. It was a battle between Russia and uh, B Japan a long time ago. And uh, so by a dinner guest of a mathematician at Cambridge University, I almost had a fight with a Japanese professor of biology. At that time, our president was supposed to visit Japan to make a treaty concerning the Kuril Islands. On this day, there was information in newspapers that for some technical reasons, the visit was cancelled. 
and then the story follows. It's a very fascinating story. It's a mathematics-related conference for which all of them are there in Cambridge. And this interaction happens between uh, the Japanese biologist and the Russian mathematician. And when you read this, you almost, you, you, you like the humor of the thing that is happening. I, I didn't tell you that entire story. You can you to read it. And then you also feel like that you are present in that same room uh, where Arnold is present and all these things are happening. So there are little passages like this from yesterday, from his life and from long ago. And there are, uh, there are fantastic pieces on mathematics as well. So uh, I learned about a certain treatment of uh, Galois theory or of Galois theory from this particular book that Arnold did. I mean, he delivered a lecture on that in 1960s and one of his students actually uh, wrote a book out of that treatment and I found the book in the internet. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that book some other day. So there are these pieces and nuggets of other references to other mathematics books, works and ideas. So in short, this is a treasure. This is a book of treasure, you can say. It lets you inside the mind of one of the greatest mathematicians of all time. And it also gives you an idea about how you can have fun with mathematics, how you can live a life as a mathematician, how you should expand your mind and read about history, about geography, about biology, about other stuff as well, while you are doing your subject, good mathematics. Because after all, all of these things are connected in the world. We humans have only divided these things, right? So, I hope you like the book. You can purchase it online and I will, I'm sure that you will enjoy it a lot. Let me know about your favorite books as well in the comment section. I will be very happy to know, know about them and learn from them and read them and so on. And finally, one word or two words, read books. All right. Take care. Bye.